Hello, everyone. Wait for more people to sign on. Okay. Hello, everyone. We're going to give one more minute and we're going to share my screen so we can begin. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Microphones are off. Perfect. If you need to chat, go ahead. I can see the chats as well. We'll begin. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited. Oh, we'll let a few more people join. It's great. Excited to have everyone. And we'll begin. Yeah. We can make outside sure maybe mute all the mics. Make sure I can do that as well. Let's see. Let's make sure we're muted. Make sure I know how to do that for everyone as well. Okay. We'll give it one more minute and we'll begin. Just going. Okay. Here we go. Can't seem to get the progress. Okay, let me make sure I mute everyone. All right. Make sure everyone that you're muted. I thought I had everyone. Any of your hand up and Roxine. Okay. Should have everyone mute it for now. Let's see. Chat. Hello, Ernie. Okay. I think we're okay now. Mm. <laughs> All right, we'll begin. Thank you, everyone, for being here today and beautiful day right after the 1212 portal that we just have, which is a self mastery number for us to get together and love ourselves deeply, really get to know ourselves and love ourselves unconditionally through getting to know our inner child, through getting to know our little person that's inside that still lives within us, who is still very much part of our psyche, it is there. And all of you have felt that call. So I welcome you because first off, without your 
and trust, we wouldn't be having this change that we're seeing in this world and this earth where more people are awakening, more people are wanting to open their hearts. They're, they're ready. All this turmoil that we're seeing is just helping us be able to go inside and not be so distracted about what's happening outside so we can focus on what really matters, which is ourselves love ourselves, take care of ourselves, and be able to concentrate on that little boy and the little girl and that little person that's inside of us who holds all the secrets, who holds the keys to our subconscious. This little person is the one that is literally running the show. It's an auto response just like how you don't think about when you walk sometimes you drive I'm sure and you, you think about how did I even get here you were thinking about something else and you you're just going autopilot this is exactly what's happening with your little boy with your little girl inside especially when it comes to things that are reactionary that you don't even think about it's just happening and they're, they're running the show in the background so welcome I'm here to provide a sacred space where you can feel comfortable to let your inner child be able to come out, be able to express itself and reveal all the secrets of the subconscious to be able to rewrite and change your future. We're letting go of beliefs that no longer serve us, patterns that have expired. And I'm going to guide you and help you go through it. First, we're going to identify them to be able to move through them and be able to start living a different reality. So let me tell you a little bit about who I am. Just working with the slides. Not sure why I should be going on the next one. (laughs) I have a feeling it's going to come back and it's going to work and it's going to go two, three slides all at once. Okay, next slide. There you go. So a little bit about the agenda, what we're doing today, just to, we're going to be covering a lot. Like I said before, uh, we're going to identify um, a little bit about me. Why are we looking at inner child healing? Why are we going into the past? Uh, We're going to talk about a little bit about the loss of the universe, just to understand why we're looking at the past, where's this mirror reflection coming from. We're going to look at beliefs that no longer serve us. We're going to look at signs where our inner child may be wounded. We're going to look look at how is it that we self-sabotage ourselves. We're going to look at what happened. Where's this dream that our inner child always had? Where did it go? And then we're going to go into what is a balance healing? What does this look like? And talk about the seven steps to self-mastery, mastery for inner child healing. Talk about reparenting. And then just talk about the full program for you. Just a little bit about my background and why I'm so compelled to really work on inner child healing because for me, it was a game changer from any other type of work that I've done. I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher. I've been in over 50 countries going to various sacred sites around the world. I'm an energy healer. I'm a channeler. And what I like about inner child healing is this is something that you go within on your own internally. Now you're taking power, you're being sovereign because no one can give your inner child the protection and the love that they're searching for, except for you. No one else can do that. And that's where the empowerment comes in. That's where the sovereignty comes in. That's where the accountability comes in. You're no longer putting pressure on the outside, depending on someone else to be able to fulfill whatever it is inside 
they feel it's lacking. My story, and I had a very deep wound within me. And if you know my story, anyone can point it out very easily. Clearly, I was a child of abandonment. My mom left when I was about three and a half years old. But I could not see that for myself till late in my 30s. I just, there's no way I could ever seen that or would want to be compared to that because I had subconsciously a negative cognition with it. So as I did my inner child work, I realized that that little girl, as I got to meet her, had to become so strong, had to really harden herself and really numb her feelings from all the hurt that she felt when her world came down crumbling, when her, when her mother, her best friend went away, when she just disappeared. So I became a, a little girl growing up that became very strong, very independent, because I wasn't going to trust anyone with my heart again. So for most of my life, I began longing for the love, for the warmth, for the acceptance that I thought only a mother could bring. So all my life, there was something missing. There was something that I wanted to bring, and I didn't know what it was. I just couldn't understand it. And then that's when I realized, even, even as I was doing different work, and I was working with my mom, there was still this part of me that was putting pressure on my mom, especially since she was doing the work with me. So my mom actually had left to the U.S. for us, for me and my sister to have a better life. Hold on. If anyone is on and you have your microphone on, if you can turn it off. I thought I had everyone on mute. Let me just double check. If you can make sure you mute yourself. Okay. I don't know how to do it from this here. It's not giving me the option. Just make sure you mute yourself, please. So my mom had to do what she had to do with my dad. So I didn't get to meet my mom till I was about nine years old again. So all this time, do you know that your blueprint, your moral and values, your upbringing that's really going to shape the person that you are later on, it's going to be your blueprint, is from the ages of three to seven, three to eight. Those are extremely important, fragile years. And all that time, I was living with my grandparents and my mom. So there was still this little part of me, a little girl of me, even though I was working with my mom, we're doing spiritual work and doing these types of sessions that still was waiting for her, like waiting for her to act a certain way, to say certain words. That little girl still wanted her mom to come and tell her, it's okay, I didn't mean to leave or for her to be a certain way. And then I realized my mom's going through her own stuff. She has her own inner child problems that she has to deal with. If I wait for her, I'm never going to be happy because who knows if she's ever going to say exactly what I want her to say, what this little girl inside of me said. So I had to raise up, become that person, that mother that I wanted my mom to be, I had to become that person. And then that's how I started building a relationship. And the moment I did that, and I genuinely and truly, A, felt compassion for my mom, understood her background, loved her for what she had to do completely. And I took reins of taking care of my little girl. My life changed completely. And I saw how empowered I became. It's like this sovereignty where I felt just grounded and anchored because to make me happy, I just need me. And that changed my world. And yes, there's this work that we have to do, different disciplines, and for everyone, it's different. So it's okay. 
I wanted to share that. And that's my background. That's my inspiration. And with that, you can take it to your, you know, maybe you're working with your dad, with your siblings, and you have your teenage years, and there's continuous, continuous work of how you think you saw it when you were a little girl and what the interpretation was. And now you go back and, and you see, oh my God, you know, there was a trauma there. And you start seeing the clear picture of how is it that it's blocking you from your success. Could be um, good problems with money, relationships. And we're going to go through all of that because we're going to go through the will of life. Why inner child healing is so important. Once again, the little girl, the little boy knows all the secrets, all the keys. Like she's going to come in. She's going to maybe give you the key, but it's up to you to turn the key and walk through as well. And how long is it going to take? It depends on the relationship that you and your inner child are going to have. So be patient, be patient. But seriously, you are so powerful. You're capable of achieving anything you wish in your life. That little girl, that little boy has all the answers to all your wildest dreams. So think about right now, when you were a little kid, what were your biggest dreams that you have? What were your biggest inspirations? What was the biggest challenge, challenge right now that you'd like to fulfill? What was it? Did you want to be an astronaut? Did you want to save the world? Do you want to be a mathematician? Did you want to fly a kite? Maybe it can be something like that. Did you want to go scuba diving? What were the dreams? How did you picture yourself when you were three years old, four years old, five years old, um, depending how much you can remember? What was it? Really think about it. Did you see yourself flying um, from land to land? Maybe it's just something as simple as going to Disneyland. You tell me. Maybe it was something time that you do with um, something spiritual, hiking a mountain, family, um, being financially independent where money literally grows on trees. <laughs> Friends, you saw blue waters, Fiji. We see all these little things when we're little, we're paying attention to everything. Health is huge. When we were little and we picture ourselves, when we're older, we think of us as being strong. We think of us as being pre free, running around, being athletic. I mean, that's how we see ourselves. We're probably not putting names to it, but we see us strong. How are we doing with our relationship with our bodies now? So what did your child dream about? Did you see yourself in a castle? Did you romanticize of something um, a little bit more spiritual? What was it? So I want you to think about that. Really start remember, where was that little girl? Did she want to be a singer? What was it? My slides are going a little slower than I'd like, <laughs> but it's coming. I don't want to go two slides before. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it skipped all the way to 24. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I'm going to having problems with this slide here. Sorry about this. Maybe if I stop sharing, I can easily just go back to the slide. Hold on. I want to make sure I show you what's coming up. Okay. Let me just go to the slide myself. <laughs> It'll be faster to change. I was not expecting this. Sorry about that. I'm not sure why it's doing this. Okay. There we are. And I'll put it back onto the right slide. So, yeah, let me put it back on. 
And we should be good with the right slide going forward. Hold on, I'm sorry about this. Wasn't expecting this much latency. Once we're done with this, we should be good to go. Okay. Okay. So why are we working with our inner child? What was it that attracted you to take this program? Maybe you worked on inner child healing before, or you've done parts. Maybe you've recognized that little boy and that inner girl. Maybe you already had interactions, or you felt the parallel worlds. Maybe you have. There's so many benefits that come with inner child healing. And for me, the biggest one, and because of everything I feel that we do, no matter what, comes down to self-love. And this is what our inner child is going to help us do. It's going to help us deepen our own self-love accepting and being grateful for all of our experiences this is key being grateful for all of our experiences so whatever it is over experiences that we are creating we're going to see what was the lesson behind that there's the world life is working for us so we have to and why it repeats itself because there's a lesson that it's trying, that we are trying to, to learn and overcome. And as we learn that lesson, if we don't learn it, then we're stuck in the same, same process. So this is why the inner child key is so important. So having that relationship with the inner child key is really going to help you raise your happiness level. And that doesn't necessarily mean that things are always going to be smooth because it's life, it's nature, everything goes into cycles, it's day and night. Uh, we have natural that we call disasters, but it's just the moving aligning itself. But it's because our perception has now changed. That's the key. So we're strengthening our relationship also with ourselves, because once we have a better relationship with ourselves, we're able to hold a better relationship with others. We can only love to the extent that we love others. And that's because when we accept all of us completely and there's less shame, there's less criticism within ourselves, we're able to navigate our own emotions better. Therefore, when other people come around, we do the same. We're not shaming them. We're not judging them as much. And every time it's a little bit less. It's a work in progress. Boundaries are key. We're going to learn a lot as we work with the inner child because many boundaries were crossed when we were little, especially when we're little. There's many times where we have to do things that we didn't want to do, that were not aligned with our heart, that weren't aligned with our mind, it wasn't aligned with our soul, it wasn't aligned with our body. Like we felt that physically there's something we didn't do. How many times did our mom or dad or parents made us do something we didn't want to do? So creating healthy boundaries going forward is key to loving yourself. It's not selfish. How you love yourself is how you let others know how to love you. It's key. It's more than okay to say no. It is your right. Should we respect it for that? Okay. Uh, this, this is a big plus, mental clarity prioritizing sometimes we get stuck trying to make little decisions and we spend so much time and this is going to help you make much faster decisions be more clear because you know where you stand you know what are your non-negotiables so that makes it a lot easier but when you don't know you know i don't know if i stand this for now i don't know if i want to do this i don't know if, if i care what the neighbor thinks then we, we don't know who we are. So if it gives us focus, it gives us direction to be able to prioritize and move through. 
And it's the same with meditation. Everything is hand in hand. And it's just going to increase your motivation because you're now you're working with what are your passion? What really fools, fuels you? When you go and tap with your inner child, with, with its own creativity, with its playfulness, you start remembering who you are, what you like. Guess what? Your career can change as well. You, you want to do something that's more aligned with what makes you happy, whatever that may be. So why are we looking into the past? Why are we looking into inner child healing? So with my background, I'm an energy healer. So what's different about everything that I do is that to me, it's key, whoever I work with and when I coach them, that they understand energy, the energy with the universe, the energy within our body, because this is what we are. We're electrons, protons, neutrons that come together in a very dense form. That's in constant vibration at all times. So we are basically batteries that are walking around. We are conductors, just like water is a conductor of energy. Different metals are a conductor of energy. Our body is also a conductor of energy. And what are we? We are 70% water, at least. The younger you are, the healthier you are, the higher percentage of water that you have. So the second law of universe is the law of correspondence, which is that mirror. When you speak, then there's an answer that comes back, like that resonance that comes back. So in order to change our future, we have to change the past because of the law of correspondence. It's like looking into the mirror. So the law of correspondence basically says, as above, so below. As below, so above. We've heard this before, meaning that our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. How we see the world outside, it's an interpretation of however it is we're feeling outside. How many times can we both be at the beach or out in the forest and someone's having a bad day, mentally things are happening, they go and look outside and every, they don't like anything. Everything looks bad for them. They're going to find something that irritates me. Here's someone else, same day, and they're in heaven. <laughs> because internally, they feel happy. And we all have our days. That's okay. But this is the law of correspondence. The first law is like everything is mine and everything starts with our thoughts. So... Our current reality mirrors what is going on inside of us. That is so true, so key. So this is what I like about talking about the loss of the universe as well, because many of us have heard the book, The Secret, How to Manifest, and Why Isn't Everyone a Millionaire? Why Isn't Everyone Happy? There are things that are missing. What's very important to understand is that the universe has three, two ingredients, basically, to work with in order to play with the universe and to be able to manifest, which is our thoughts and beliefs. And I'm, our, I'm adding word because our, our words are our thoughts and our beliefs to make, to simplify it. And yes, you can change your thoughts and, and in your words as much as you can. But that's what's the beauty about inner child work is that, like I said, everything is energy. So the universe is just reading energy. So it doesn't, it doesn't know if it's happened or it has not happened. It's, it's the vibration that it's reading. So if internally, subconsciously, unconsciously, you are vibrating fear, you're vibrating shame, you're vibrating unworthiness, very common, then the universe picks that up so quickly. You may be saying in your words, I'm happy, doing hono pono, but inside, 
there's this huge vibration that's speaking also very loud to the universe. And this is why I love inner child healing. Because once we find out what's inside of us, we call them blinders that we didn't know about that our inner child is going to come and tell us and let us know what this are, whatever he or she may be holding on to. And then we rewrite that story and we're able to manifest because we're letting go of that vibration, whatever stuck emotions we have inside. So like I said, the universe has three ingredients to be able to manifest and make our wildest dreams, whatever you want come true. Our thoughts, our beliefs, our words. Thoughts. First love universe, like I said, all is mind. Every thought creates a vibrational wave that speaks to the universe. Absolutely everything is always in constant vibration. Your beliefs. And this is what's been passed down from culture, from DNA, from your lineage, from society, from TV, everywhere. We've been programmed every time since we were little, we're picking up all these signals and we're just like a little sponge. And this become you know, all this information and needs to be organized and structured and they become patterns. So conscious, unconscious, and subconscious beliefs are heard louder, are heard loud and clear by the universe through its magnetic, energetic waves. And this is what we're going to be focused on with inner child healing is going into the subconscious that so we can uncover it. And for many of you, I've seen some of the notes. It's so I, I love it because you're starting to feel when you start feeling a little bit uncomfortable, you start feeling all of a sudden you never did, all of a sudden memories start coming back. It's, it's, it's your inner child asking for help. But you're, and you're ready to receive this information. So instead of pushing it down and saying, no, I don't want to deal with this. Thank you for being here. So we can rescue that inner child per se, we are able to let go and free of whatever emotions and traumas that are coming up. And your word, wow, your word creates your reality. Be very, very careful. If you knew how powerful your words are, and then maybe you wouldn't speak ever again. <laughs> But every word carries a frequency of low or high energetic vibration. How you speak to yourself or others is how you are creating this universe, this planet. It's creating your reality. And there are many things within culture, especially when the Western world, and, you see, and then you see it in movies, where it's okay to call ourselves the S word. Oh, we did something wrong. We call ourselves the S word. Like it's no big deal. So that little inner child lives within you. This is what you're telling your little child this is what you're telling yourself. So how, how do you view yourself? How do you love yourself? How do you respect yourself when you're calling yourself words that are not nice, that are low vibration, that are low frequency? If you're telling the universe that you are this S word, then guess what? It's going to bring more of this. Whatever it is you're saying, I was at a photo shoot the other day. We're at a temple and they're giving us the water so we can drink off our hands. And the, the girl asked, well, what is this for? you know, what, what kind of blessings? is this something specific? She's like, yeah, this is for more money. And the first thing that came out of her mouth was, oh, I need that. I have no money. I'm like, oh, <laughs> when you say, be careful of what you say. When you say, I don't have this, I don't have that, I'm poor. Then you're coming from a place of lack. You're coming from a place of empty glass. You're telling the world, world that you don't have you're telling the universe that you don't have, that you lack of. Whatever it is you're speaking is going to give you more of. That's why being grateful, waking up, and just being thankful for being alive and walking in nature and seeing the richness and feeling the abundance and feeling the ecstasy. The universe doesn't know whether you have money or not like that. that it, it's all energy. It's all a vibration. It does not know the difference. 
it's playing with energy. So be very careful of the words that you're saying, you're saying, how you're feeling. And this is all a transition, especially if there's something new for you. So first step is to observe. Now you have this information, you have this knowledge, and you're going to start observing. I'm like, oh, I did do this. And be careful as you catch yourself and don't feel guilty. We're learning. We're all little kids. We're learning. We're learning how to stand up. We don't know how to walk just yet. And we're going to fall many, many times. And when you see a two-year-old fall or a one-year-old, does it even ever cross your mind to say something mean to that little kid because it fell? It's barely starting to strengthen its muscles. No, you pick it right up and you encourage it. It's okay. Try again. That's who we are. We're learning how to crawl and stand up. And we're going to fall many, many times. So be as sweet, as gentle with yourself as possible, please. I love this quote by Lao Tzu. Watch your thoughts for they become your words. Watch your words for they become your actions. Watch your actions for they become your habits. Watch your habits for they become your character. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. And what did it start with? A thought. All is mind. That's the first law of the universe. You have the thought, whatever thought it is you have, whatever question it is you have, the universe is going to respond, which is why the question is always going to be greater than the answer. And I'll repeat that again. The question is always going to be greater than the answer. And for us, we're always thinking, oh, the answer is the best because it allows us to, to move forward or, or feel more comfortable. We get the answers, but then what happens? Okay, maybe for a day or two, or you get a, an answer for whatever question you have right away. And then what happens? Then you have another question. Because you're, we're, we're evolving, you want to learn something new, you want to do something new, whatever it may be. So you move on because we're constantly evolving. But let's ask ourselves, what happened? We had all these dreams that we were little kids. We wanted to fly around. Maybe we wanted to be at the beach. Maybe we wanted to be an astronaut. Maybe we wanted to be a mathematician. He just wanted to surf. Who knows? You just wanted to be a mother. You just have a lot of friends and be financially free and literally see money grow on trees. What happened to all those little dreams, all those big dreams that the little kid had? Many things happen as soon as we're born. So many false beliefs. Remember, we come to this world whole. We are rich in nature. We are true love. We are true light. Everything that we need is already inside of us. And then all of a sudden we come to this world. This is what we signed up for. There are false beliefs. There's a lot of conditioning. You should do this. You should do that. You should talk to this person and not to this other. You should behave one way with one person behave different with, an, with another. We see different cultures. We have our own culture. We see like the bipolarity that happens between each um, groups of people. We have our parents who are passing down all their teachings and all their beliefs. And beliefs become concrete. They become so real in our mind. When someone comes and challenges us, they're literally destroying our world and we're holding on tight because that's what's made us survive up to this point because based on these beliefs that we have, we have traumas as we're growing up and that's all of our interpretations. 
you know, sometimes I talk to people like, oh, but it really wasn't like that. I'm like, it's, it's not how you, especially with parents, when you're working with um, parents and kids, they're like, but that's not what happens. Like, it's not what you saw happen. It's what the child, what they experienced. That's real. We don't negate anyone else's reality. What happened to that child, even to a 14, 15 year old, what's going in their head is real. You may see it a different way. We are all living our own reality. Okay, so there's little traumas that start happening. Society, television, news, newspaper. Basically what it is, is like we're not allowed to genuinely express ourselves. We're not allowed to be our true musical note. Remember, we're energy. And we are vibrating, like our notes and our vibration and what we can call our codes is very unique. Each one of us brings in this beautiful gift that makes us unique. And as, as, as we grow up, we're not allowed to be us, to be generally express ourselves. But if not, they tell us, oh, if you don't fit in with all the kids, you don't want to be the weird one in the school, right? Or you can't do that because what is the neighbor going to say? Like you're more concerned about what other people are going to say as opposed to let yourself or your kids or your like literally you don't want your friends because then you start creating this posse, this group of people and you all want them to behave a certain way. We're still doing it. Not allowing ourselves, all of us, to we're, we're containing this container that we need to act a certain way. How are we going to express our own selves? That's what starts happening. We're being told since we're little to not be who we are. So we start creating another personality, another character in order to survive. And we do it because we want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want to be part of the community acceptance and love this is always what we're searching for everything that we do correct we want to we're all everything that we do every single person like we're deep down we're looking for love we're searching for love this is really what's happening inside come on slide okay <laughs> so let's look at false beliefs and look at this slide well i'm going to send you um this slide as well for you after the call so see how many of these false beliefs and also write your own i mean this is part of the uncovering start questioning everything is mind everything is thought you just start ruffling those feathers and you just start asking the right question the answers will come remember first law of the universe all is mine. Second law is that mirror, that reflection that's going to come in. So I can be my real self or all be judge. Can you relate to that? These are false beliefs that are blocking our success. I can't fall in love or I'll get my heart broken. I can't tell the truth because I might get judged. I don't want to ask for what I want because what if I get rejected? This is a big one for many of us. We're already scared. We think we're not going to have it. So we don't even try. I can't trust people because I've been betrayed before. Um, and this happens, especially as we get older, even with love, you know, things don't work out, don't work out. You lose faith and you don't want to be hurt anymore. Or, you know, people have um, cheated on you, they betray you, they, they you know, they, they abuse you financially, emotionally, whatever, maybe there's a betrayal. And this happens, sometimes it's big because it, there's a betrayal that happened with a mother, with a father, you expect your, your caretakers to are certain, a certain way. And then one day, they don't do that. And you see this as a trauma. Could it be a divorce? From parents, your dad was supposed to be there the whole time. He's that masculine role that makes you so protected. And all of a sudden he's gone and you see that as a, as a betrayal. 
I can't pursue my dreams because I don't know what I'll do if I fail. I see this very much. Um, people are so scared to fail and remember. I don't, I don't even like using that word anymore. I don't associate with it because there's no such thing as failure. We're just experiencing. It doesn't work out once. We try it again. It's not the end of the world. But we're, I mean, a lot of people also feel like it's not only the school system, but in our society where we're constantly being graded. Like, you know, as, as we come out of this toddler phase where till you reach three, now you can get up and walk. Then after that, like you're not allowed to fall. You're not allowed to take a step back. From there on, it's like, if you don't keep moving forward, we punish your bad person, you're failing. Like, no, it's part of life. Everything's an experience. Being gentle with ourselves. This is a big one. It's too late to pursue my dream. One of the good stories that I like is the owner of Kentucky Fried Chicken, the Colonel. He didn't create the... The global wide chain KFC. So I believe he was like late 40s, early 50s. And many other people that I know in their 50s, 60s, people that are grandparents that just put their mind and start focusing on whatever it is they want to do and, and they do it. So it's never too late. Never, ever too late. People think also sometimes that the universe helps to get them. So think about what blocks you may have for you. The big one is I'm not, I'm unworthy of love. And this, think about this, because this was true for me. Like if I, before, if I've read this and someone told me I'm unworthy of love, I was the type of person that would, had created this very strong character. Like I'm so tough. Like, I love myself, but in reality, it was more of a facade. This armor that I had to put on, that I had put on in order to protect myself from the unworthiness that I was carrying inside, deep, deep inside. So really, as I'm reading this, if it- Hello, brought, Eric, this is oh, so hello. Back there, and I'm just calling for an update on the report for 407 Hearthstone Hi, Court. someone has- You can please turn your call. Really I appreciate it for updating the system. My number is 4 Okay, got it. Sorry about that. So any false beliefs, um, change is negative and must be avoided. A lot of us- <laughs> We run away from change because change is uncomfortable. No one is with something that's guaranteed in this life, change. We resist change. But that's where, so they call it growing pains. In order to grow, there's going to be change. I must have the approval of others to have self-worth. That's a big one. We're always seeking approval from others, from our parents from our partners from our siblings from our co-workers from our community we don't realize how much power we give to others like really and, and to the point where it becomes almost it's chronic no it's chronic you don't even feel it and sense it but all of a sudden when you gain it back then you see the difference it's like you're running on a low energy and you think this is normal. And all of a sudden you do like a two, three day cleanse, juice cleanse, and your organs start running different. You're like, wow, I didn't realize I had, could, I could have this more energy. I can have much, much more mental clearness, right? It's the same thing. Sometimes we don't realize how we allow others to run our life. Like the incisions, because we're not dropping in and tapping into our little girl or little boy and asking, honey, what do you want? What is it that you really need? What are you seeking for? More than like, it's not going to be what the neighbor wants, what your partner wants. No, you got to do you first. The other one is I am who I am. I cannot change. Oh God, I hear this so much. We say like, oh, 
it's too late. Or we talk about others. It's too late. They can't change now. Yes, always. Anything can happen in a matter. This world is, this is dynamic. This world is dynamic. Energy is dynamic. The moment you decide and you make that decision, you're vibrating different. You're resonating different. Take your thoughts, bring in your emotions. And then with your body, like you have to take also action. Dreaming about it and, and feeling it, it's only going to take you so far. Let's make sure that I had everyone mute. Okay, better. If I fail, I'm unworthy and deserve to be punished. This is a big one. A lot of us, I mean, come from cultures where we're punished. We came from patriarchal um, rule for many thousand years. And, you know, you didn't do something right. You, you got punished, everything. And then notice how much we love punishing others. But, and just observe and don't, don't punish yourself because now you're noticing that you punish others. It's so like the first step is just observing, just noticing how we do this constantly. You're observing the observer. Key. So this is part of the homework. Please start excavating start asking those questions. What are, what is it? Why I believe these are your patterns that is blocking my success. All right, come on slide. <laughs> Should go to the next one. If we do this. Okay. I like this quote by Louis, Louis Hay. We learn our belief systems as very little children, and then we move through life creating experiences to match our beliefs. Look back in your own life and notice how often you have gone through the same experience. This is so true. Whatever culture, belief system you're born into, and that's why you're vibrating. That's what you believe in. That's, that's what you attract. This is what you start bringing in for your world. But as just you become more curious, you want to learn different languages. You want to learn different cultures. You want to understand different religions, different thoughts. You want to learn about self-development. Then you start meeting other people as well. Or you're creating with a different energy. And then all of a sudden you start changing your world. You start creating a different world which is why we have this beautiful world now in global where, you know, all races are mixed together and we have all this fusion food, fusion everything now. But be very aware of that. Our thoughts are bringing this in. Could not find a better um, slide for this. But this is a really good example how when we have unworthy beliefs, how easily something that looks very innocent in hindsight actually has some like much deeper, deeper wounds and different trauma. So for example, here could be like a lady or a mother, a mother in this case, who is tasting the food, or maybe someone said that this soup is awful. So she believes it, and if, if maybe it is true, so what does that mean to you? So this person thinks, wow, I'm a terrible cook. She could have just thought, no, it's just a soup, but I'm a great cook. Then she thinks, God, I'm a terrible cook. So she's allowing that. And then so she believes this, and that's the case. What does that mean to her? She really believes that she's a terrible cook. And she starts believing as well that she's a bad mother. So if that's true, what does that really mean to her, to this person? You start thinking that I'm a failure at everything. And I was like, that's the core belief. Sometimes we don't, we, your, your example is probably not that this um, aggressive. Um, that does that we're resonating that and we don't even realize it. We... 
the big one with feeling we're, we're a failure at everything sometimes because we don't follow up. We don't honor our own decisions. We don't follow through with what we say we're going to do. So we let ourselves down. In this case, hey, she made it. I think that's awesome. First off, she tried. But what starts happening is if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you say you're going to be somewhere and you don't go, if you say you're going to do a project, if you don't do it, you start losing faith in yourself. Then you start creating that thoughts like, what am I even going to start trying? So be very aware of where you are right now with that relationship with yourself and following, following through. This is another part of our homework. Well, I call it play work. This is fun. We're getting to know ourselves. So wounded sign, we're uncovering wounded signs now. Where do I feel it as well? So wounded signs, see if you resonate with any of this and like check how many of them do you do. It doesn't make you any better or any worse than someone. It doesn't mean that you have to do more work than everyone else. We're all so unique. We're all so different. Someone may have something that maybe it seems a lot lighter, uh, but maybe it's going to take that person a little bit longer uh, to resolve that trauma um, because of their own personal history and their own, you know, other traumas that they have as well. And as opposed to you, maybe something really, really heavy, but maybe, maybe your desire I mean, a will is huge. Your energy and your will is going to allow you to carry through. And a lot of us have lived very difficult situations to be able to share those experiences with others, just like I am. We're here to share experiences and for other people to know, like, you're not alone. This is part of life. And as we share our stories, we give permission to others to be able to also free themselves and know that it is possible. So see how you reflect these and notice how your body feels. That's a big indicator. Is it expanding? Like I'm happy, like I can breathe better. Or is there some in your body where it contracts? I'm a people pleaser and tend to lack a strong identity. This is this are wounded, wounded signs. I'm a rebel. I feel more alive when I'm in conflict with others. I tend to hoard things and have trouble letting go. <laughs> I think we all hoard in different levels, don't we? I feel guilty about standing up for myself. So not speaking your truth. I mean, a lot of us, it's really hard, really telling people no, for example, not today. Like how hard, why is it that we're scared to say, you know what, I don't feel like hanging out with you today. <laughs> I don't feel like going out today. You know, and they're like, oh, but you're not doing anything. It's like, yeah, I just want to stay here. And we make up all this story sometimes. And just, you know, and this is what I love about being in Bali because everyone just like, well, how do you feel today? You want to want to go out? Do you want to do something? Everyone's like, no, yes. They just speak their truth. And everything's okay. Like, you know, because everyone's doing the same. So we, we respect that. I feel inadequate as a man or a woman. So part of you that doesn't feel like you're fully man or you're fully woman, whatever it is that you idea of what you think it's a, a woman or a man. I'm always driven to be a super achiever. This is huge. Um, sometimes when we're super achievers, super competitive, we don't respect um, certain rules. We don't respect ourselves. We're not listening to our bodies. Um, we're not resting, we're not listening to emotions, we're so busy, we're not listening to the little boy and the little girl inside of us, so really look into that, is everyone muted here, I'm gonna, if I see Paul, I'm gonna mute you, okay, I feel more responsible for others than for myself, this is good, some of us don't even notice that we're carrying burden for our family, all of a sudden, we put ourselves in that position where I'm the caretaker, I'm going to be the savior. And then you forget about you. What do you want? 
So think about that. How do you feel? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel alone? Do you feel stuck? Feel fearful? Um, and the stuck gets good. And this one also goes with money. Some people, you know, they're like, okay, so I've been very successful, but I can't seem to pass this level. Like I'm stuck at this level. It's almost like there's been a programming where you're only allowed to be middle class, let's say, or high and middle class, but you're not allowed to go higher because maybe there is some trauma or some perception of what it would mean for you to go a little bit higher. Maybe you're scared of what other people may think, or you, you see as that portion as being bad. There's a story behind that. I'm an addict or have been addicted to something. Food is a good one. I'm addicted to carbs. <laughs> I love carbs. Whatever it may be, we all have different addictions. I avoid conflicts at all costs. This is like, it's so hard for us to speak our feelings, speak our truth, really, really in a good way. Just tell people how we're feeling. It's okay. I never felt close to one or both of my parents. These are big in our child healing wounds. Um, I've had to work with both of this myself and um, admitting them was not easy at first. Um, and, you know, there, there's, it's so beautiful because when you identify them and you're able to say, yes, okay, I, I, I'm open for this. Wow, you're opening so many doors. I'm ashamed of expressing strong emotions such as sadness or anger. You say it as really bad so you don't let it out in a healthy way. The deepest part of me, I feel that there's something wrong with me. And this is huge for many of us. Sometimes you can have everything. You have a house, you have a family, you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, you're married, whatever it may be. But there's still something inside of you that you're not happy with. And you have kids. Like You think you're going to get married and that's going to solve the problem. You think you're going to have kids and that's going to solve the problem. There's something inside of you. Like, what is it? So this is what we're going into our little kid. I have trouble starting or finishing things. This is huge. <laughs> Sometimes we take on too many activities and then we don't finish anything. Or like I said, you've lost faith, so you don't even start anything. We start doing everything else. Um, and sometimes it's something in particular. Maybe there's a book that you're, you're, you're trying to finish, right? Maybe there's a painting that you wanted to do. Maybe, maybe you said, I really want to learn how to play this instrument. But there's this big desire, there's this, there's this big desire, but you haven't started it or you haven't finished for some reason. Um, and this is, this is good. This, you know, this is for your own lesson to learn what it is. So then you can move forward and be able to execute and actually successfully complete and finish and manifest it. I rarely get mad, but when I do, I become rageful. I have a friend, she's so sweet, but God, do not put her in the freeway in Los Angeles, because that's where she lets everything out. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Everyone's different. And this is a, a good one. I have sex when I don't really want to. What are you telling your body? What are you even telling that other person? Right? Very much. And some of us feel uncomfortable talking about sensuality and sex i mean we are sexual beings we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the most sacred highest divine act that there is it's just that we're changing our perspective and this is a huge sign of wounded of wounding um that has been running from generations to generations to generations that we don't even talk about it. it's been taboo and it's time to talk about our sensuality you know, our, our sexual desires. There's so much power. And that's another class that's going to be coming up because you want to manifest that energy. That's the Kundalini. It's fire. All righty. Next page. So really think about this. Uh, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to email this to you as well to go back and add your own. So what is happening? So we have all this wounded healings that we have or identifying with them. So what happens is that we're sabotaging ourselves from being successful. And sabotaging means when we actively or passively take 
take steps towards preventing ourselves from reaching whatever goal it may be that we have. So these are patterns that we have. Um, it could be procrastination, chronic worry, substance abuse, chronic lateness, stress eating. That's more, well, I wouldn't stress the, it's more comfort eating for me. See what we, we, we relates for you. And if it's not here, add it. These are just to give you ideas and see how your body feels, how it reacts. Conscious about that. Fear of intimacy, commitment issues, putting yourself down. We don't even notice sometimes and we, we talk down to ourselves all the time. We're not being nice. How would you talk to your two-year-old, three-year-old? It's huge. And as we move forward, what really helped me, I found my baby doll and I started carrying her with me everywhere. So I would talk to myself like as I would to my baby doll. It, it created wonders. My dreams, everything started changing. That's coming up. Um, more down the line, ignoring negative emotions. A lot of our self-sabotaging, even here, one of the key reasons people self-sabotage is lack of self-esteem. Lack of self-esteem comes in a lot of it because we can't talk about our emotions. We can't express ourselves. So it's not your fault either. Like I said, you know, what happened to that little kid? We weren't allowed to speak our truth, to be unique, to be ourselves. So we are reparenting now. We're coming in and we're giving ourselves that love. But right now it's key for us to identify and know that this does exist within us. We're identifying right now. Okay. It's all we're doing. Um, this is a good one. <laughs> When we're in relationships or, you know, I think we come like we're self-sabotaging our relationship. Sometimes it's just maybe you do need to break up with that person. You know, they're, they're not good for you. But instead of having that conversation, you start criticizing them. <laughs> You're self-sabotaging just simply because you can't have a truthful conversation with them. Holding grudges is big. Oh, my goodness. Oh, holding grudges, that is such a big weight. It's, it creates so much stress on the body. It's just letting go. Trouble st stating your needs, once again. Big one, coming into the victim pattern. How many times, like, well, poor me, wasn't me, was the other person. My mom always started this. My grandma always started it. It's my boss's fault all the time. Maybe it is true, but at the same time, you know, like attracts like. There's a reason why you're being called to be in that circumstance. So blaming others when things go wrong. Is this a pattern? Does this always happen? Instead of saying, okay, what could I have done differently? Where do I come in? How did, how did it go into play? How could I could have um, packaged the information different? What energy did it carry as well? You're being true to your, now, now when you're being true to yourself, and you are delivering from aligning like mentally, emotionally, and with your body and good energy. Now the other person doesn't respond. And that's when you can also make that choice and say, okay, I choose not to interact and engage in this relationship no more because I'm willing to move forward. I'm willing to evolve, I'm willing to open my heart and have a truthful conversation. But the other person is not um, doing the same. And then, then you can make that choice but also first look as how true are you being to yourself are you just pointing fingers or is there something that you could do different the big one is dating people who aren't right for you so you're basically dating the same type of person with different name different color <laughs> hair whatever it may be but basically it's the same theme that's happening you're living the same experiences, it's the same pattern, you're attracting the same type of energy. Maybe they're emotionally um, unable to you, maybe they don't want kids and you want kids, um, whatever it may be. So this is key, go back for yourself and see what are the self-sabotage patterns that you also may have. So we've explored a lot, we've identified uh, what are some negative beliefs, uh, wounded healing, wounded um, healing. So uh, wounded, 
how windy that we may have and then how we self-sabotage so it's no wonder like where did your children your child dream go like that inspiration that wanting to be free like knowing that you can financially care because now it makes more sense okay now i understand why is it that i'm not being able to live my full potential right now so first we have to identify it which is exactly what we're doing right now so where did your child dream go think about those little traumas we're uncovering right now so we're waking everything up we're ruffling the feathers but doesn't this look beautiful right and, and think about like where is it maybe maybe you are traveling but maybe you're like down a little bit more of your health maybe you do have the family but need a little bit more support financially this is a big one i work with people who have all the money in the world right? i met some people that are billionaires and they're so unhappy to the point of wanting to commit suicide I said, like, that's their own reality because there's something inside that's living within them that is eating them alive. We all have different realities. We don't know what's going on in the other person's shoe. All right. And this is what's different. So what's important here is now that we've uncovered all the different um, woundings that we have, the beliefs, and how we're self sabotaging ourselves is let's bring this all to balance. This is the wheel of life. It's important to see where am I with my health? Where am I with my friends and family? Where am I financially? Fun and leisure, spiritually, you know, involvement, however that may look for you. And you can. I'll send you some notes on this and how you can divide it up a little bit different and add different meanings to it as well. Um, where are you with love? You know, giving and receiving love in your relationship with your significant other or wanting to manifest that for yourself on your personal growth and your personal involvement and in your career. So this is what's important right here. So I emailed you already the will of life for you. And you're going to be making your own assessment. Right? You're ranking it from one through 10 and the instructions are there. And I want you to be truthful to yourself and whatever number comes first, don't think about it too much. So really like, where are you with your health? Like one through 10, one being, I don't do anything or much, or I need to be going to the hospital to tend to, you know, I'm running a marathon and I eat very healthy. Um, so I want you to look at where it is, and then you're going to see what areas in your life feel more balanced than others. And then afterwards, you can look at it and see, okay, well, this is where I want to tackle first, but it's important for all of us to really look at the whole scope. Like this is key. Um, sometimes what happens is, you know, um, some of us are very, very, very spiritual and we're just meditating or we're very vegan, but then we're not really looking at the nutritional value and we're not moving. And now we have health issues as well, <laughs> right? Or we're too much in the cave. And then we forgot about, you know, relating with other people. We're so high up. We forget like how to deal with day-to-day -day emotions. Or maybe you're doing very well with your, with your career and your finances. You're spending so much time there that you forgot about your, your family or your friends. You forgot about spirituality. It's all a balance, people. It's about finding this beautiful balance within everything. So we're doing a little check of where are we right now in our lives. Don't think about it too much that that first instinct that's going to come in, that's what's true for you. But it's very important to visualize. So we're going to start with that. All right. Now, come on, slide, work with me. So what I have put together is called um, Self Master Inner Child Healing. I'm a self mastery coach. And the way that I work, um, since I work with energy, like I said, it's important to me that whoever I work with, I, I, I let them understand and for them to understand what are the universal laws 
how we work with them to be able to manifest. And then for us to understand what is the energy within our bodies. So if you haven't learned yet about the chakras, this is going to be amazing for you. Because as if you look at the bottom, as we're going to be working with each section, can you see it? As each section of the wheel of life that you saw, so we can have a balanced life. So health will be the root chakra, which is at the bottom, because before we do anything, like we need to be rooted on the earth. What that means is like, we need to be safe in this world. We need to feel that we belong, that we are accepted. We need to feel like we have a roof um, above our head. We need to feel that we are protected, that we are loved. We don't have this structure. We don't have this space. If we don't have strong roots, then our emotions are going to be out of whack, then we don't have power to create like the creativity is not there because you're in fear mode. This is where people in their root chakra, if they suffer from anxiety, a lot of stress, there's something here in the root chakra that doesn't that does that they don't feel safe. Maybe they have been abandoned before. Um, and so they're very fragile. Be careful how you talk to them till they're, that they feel stronger and rooted because they already feel like they don't belong. Um, and I say this because I, I work with people who are very fragile in this area. You got to be very careful how you talk to them as well. So first as we work, we work, the first step is working on health, which is what we're going to work with today um, as well. And then we would go up and talk about the second chakra is the solar plexus. And this is exactly where the light is. So you see the red light. It's um, between the, la the legs, which is the groin area. And then the, the orange light has moved up. Now it's in the, um, which is called the sacral chakra, the sacred spot, which is the womb area for the woman. So this is like represented by friends and family. So then that Second step is we're going to really be talking about how did our friends, how did our family, how did they really influence our life? So we're going to do an exercises to really go in there. Then the third one is our solar plexus. So first we feel rooted. And once we feel secure, then our creativity starts flowing. Our emotions are happy. Then we're able to execute because we have these great ideas and now we feel strong. That's where the solar plexus comes in. That's right in the belly area. So then from there, we can push through and get the energy and get the will. That's when we're talking about finances and career. And then, of course, you have the heart chakra, which is love. It's the bridge that's really bringing in the higher realms and the lower realms, right? Really connecting heaven and earth. So then we're going to be expanding from this beautiful bridge, from our heart chakra, doing different exercises that have to do with love. And then we go into fun and leisure. This is going to be more related with our throat chakra. This is our expression. How do we express ourselves? Holy diversification. I like it in Spanish because Spanish, it's called diversión, but it's to diversify, to do something different, to really change what you're doing. So then we're going to be focusing on fun and leisure. And then we go into personal growth with our third chakra. And then overall, it's your spirituality with the, with the crown chakra, which has to do more with being in service. So to me, it's all about really bringing in this inner child, where we're going to be focusing in all the different areas of our lives that we saw in the Wheel of Fortune. And at the same time, we are strengthening each of our chakras, all of our energy wheels as well. It's a very complete program. Uh, so I'm very excited about this. Um, so here it is. It's a seven step to self-master inner child healing. Um, this is the first week already, and then we take off on January 3rd. So today we're working this master classes, focus on the root chakra, focusing on health. So before we get need to be ready, we're going to meet our inner child. We're going to go in and find out who or who she is. And then, you know, we go on, like I said, like I just explained, um, week by week. And we need a little bit of integration time as we're doing work, 
from one to the next. Um, I'm very, very excited about this program because it's, it's so complete. And where is my, oh no, I can't go to the next slide. There it is. Okay. Now let's go into that interesting. Okay, there it is. So today, step one, self-mastery inner child healing. So today it's about inner child greeting. So we're going to meet our inner child. We're going to go in focusing on the root chakra. So our inner child feels secure. So see, our inner child knows that it's, it's loved, uh, that there's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to be anxious of because guess what? You're showing up for him or her. You're now the older version of her and you can get and you can give all that love and all that support. This is going to bring in health. So what we do first, always, 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 is putting in our intention. Intentions are portals that we create. This is us all bringing together. And the more people that we are and we're putting these intentions, guess what? The bigger the portal it is. So as we all come together as a group, we're working on each chakra. We're all meeting our inner child that energy strengthens. I'm not sure if you're meditated alone or even in prayer. Um, you feel the energy, how it's different when you're praying or meditating alone. And then when you go and do it as a group, you see the difference. You see how much powerful it is as well. Not that it's not as powerful as when you're by yourself, but you feel the difference. So we're going to be meeting and greeting right now, our inner child. Well, what's happening is we're acknowledging, we're listening, we're going to be reparenting this inner child. So we're coming in and we are going to be that parent for our inner child, you know, that we wish we had. However you ever wish your parents to be with you, this is your opportunity to actually be that for your inner child. So we're going to do a guided meditation. Then during this guided meditation, we're acknowledging, we're listening, we're repattering, we're feeling, um, we're feeling, and then we're releasing. And this is what's really key with guided meditation and that it's different because it allows us to drop into our heart. We're bringing down our heart rate. We're putting aside ego so that we can really go inside and become vulnerable bull, letting down that warrior energy, letting go, because that warrior energy has been amazing, it's brought us this far, but it also has that energy that it can still run away and it avoids. So just becoming vulnerable and letting go, because you, you've seen all the patterns that we're repeating and that's why sometimes it's not till this warrior is broken down and has no more energy. And that is when all the epiphanies come in. That is where all the breakthroughs come in. Because now we're tired. We're tired of those patterns. And we're like, I just let go. Usually that's what happens. We're like, I just gave up. That's when the miracles come in. Because in order to receive, you have to let go. If, if I'm trying to give you something, but your hand is still, you know, you don't open your hand, you're not releasing in order for you to receive, you have to, you want to open your hand, you have to breathe out, and let the muscles relax, and you can receive. But if you're holding on strong in your contract, then you can receive, saying that let go, let those muscles relax. Everything that we do is going to do with journaling. So um, we'll go into the exercises that you're doing today. But journaling is going to be key. Um, we're going to be healing. We're going to be harmonizing as we're journaling. Today, we're going into the child appearance. We're going to go into the heart connection. Um, I also want to do a little bit of every time our, our inner child felt unsafe, any emotional neglect that may have happened. So start feeling comfortable. Um, 
And make sure that's important. If your back can be straight, you can either be sitting in Indian position or um, just on a chair, but your back is straight. And then with step one, we have the play work. I like it, play work, the homework. Yeah, play work, make it fun. Just play. And then integration is key with whatever you do, especially with a lot of energy gets released, relax, ground, go, go walk on the sand if you can, or if not on grass. But it's just the same as if you're taking a yoga class, you do all these movements to move, um, to stretch your body, to be more flexible. You're opening up, um, stretching all those different muscles, all these different tendons. You're creating a little bit of energy. Maybe, maybe you're out of breath for a little bit. And what happens at the end? You go to Shavasana. And a lot of people get a lot of experiences, a little bit of altered state during shavasana because guess what you now you're receiving because you're relaxing so same thing as we're working um every week with a different chakra we're doing different exercises and different things are being revealed to you we need to integrate we need to relax and let all this new energy that's the same thing with shavasana now you're no longer controlling you're not telling your body move left move right twist like a pretzel nail the you allow the energy the higher intelligence do its job it knows best so it's just like part of it's also just understanding and just allowing and have faith so here we go do you feel comfortable the next slide it just tells you a little bit more about why meditation I didn't go from here. So we're doing guided meditation. Everything that I do, it's very important that it's the alignment with mind, soul, and body. And all of this is part of spirit, of course. Um, guided meditations, any type of meditation, and they've even done studies, whether you meditate alone or doing it with guided meditations, the results are almost the same, but it really does. And now we have studies and we need this for us to have motivation. But before, you know, the sages, um, the rishis that have been meditating and even back to Egyptian times, they just, they just they didn't need studies, but they saw the effects that they had because they were actually doing it. How really meditation gave new perspectives. It helps you deal with more stressful situations because you're calming down. It helps you manage your stress so much better and really helps gives you self-awareness because you're being aware of yourself. When you're meditating, you're, you're watching you um, and being more in the present. This is huge. I mean, the gift of being here is the present, like literally the present is the present, <laughs> reducing negative emotions, imagination and creativity. And this is a big one, especially for inner child. What did their inner child like to do? They like to play. They like to dance. They like to move. They were creative beings. We are artists. We are creative beings. It's like we're going to be bringing up all our art, especially if you thought that you're not creative, you're not an artist, connecting back with your inner child. You're, it's going to surprise you, um, increase patience and tolerance. And ready with music. And this just gives you a little bit of an idea right now, since it's the first class, I also want to make sure to, for you to understand um, what we're doing and the mechanics behind it. So inner child parenting, which is the role that we're taking now, now we're being the parent that we always wanted our parents to be, you know, and, and bringing it from a place of humbleness, our caretakers, our mom and dad, they are just human they did the best that they could. They are naturally imperfect. So they may have not always been there emotionally, psychologically, or physically when we needed them, but that's okay. As our inner child's wounds come to the surface, we're going to allow ourselves to be what we needed as a child. We thank and we honor our parents for doing the best that they could. And now moving forward, we are going to give our in our child what it needs so this is usually when we look at parents and we look at um, kids this is what 
children need, who need stimulation, emotional warmth. We need to feel secure and be safety that we're protected. We need the basic needs. We need to feel like we're stable. As I talk about a stable home. See how boundary shows up there again. Boundaries are keys. Kids need guidance. Here we are. Here we are. We are the guides. Are we stimulating? Are we going to be playing? <laughs> Doing things that are different. Warmth is good. Watch out how you talk to yourself. Okay. So this is our little guidance for you as you're coming now in contact with your inner child. Basically, this is you, how you treat yourself every day. There's like, so you are that little kid walking around. How are you placing those boundaries for you? How are you talking to yourself? How are you giving yourself the protection, the stability that you need? This is a big one. Basic care, self-care, self-love. How do you reward yourself? A big one for me is taking baths. You know, and you can make them very intentional. But what, how is it that you're giving yourself? Are you allowing yourself to go out for a nature walk? Are you allowing yourself, you know, to not be in the computer all the time and to be able to really expand your mind? Um, safety and setting boundaries. Who are you letting in? Maybe you don't want to be with certain people. Maybe the people that are abusive to you. Um, emotionally, psychologically, whatever it may be. You are your own little kid. So we're exploring all of this for you. Okay. And then during part of the process that we're doing, we're meditating, we're acknowledging, we're reparenting, we are reframing at the same time. And what's great about reframing is not only healing the past, but it's going to help us break any future patterns. So, Because once you heal the past, you no longer have those um, patterns in the future. If you heal it, then it doesn't have to repeat itself. Sometimes it'll come back because remember, everything is a spiral. Um, but you now you have the tools, you know how to deal with it. And it can be also that it comes back and it may seem very dense and um, denser than before. But guess what? It's so much quicker. You jump back so much faster. And when you jump back, you jump back even higher. Always, always, I see this all the time where we talk about it with different people. So with reframing, we're releasing those all negative thought patterns. So we're going to be identifying as we get to meet our inner child, he starts talking to us. Um, what exactly is it that, um, you know, we're, we start identifying our patterns that even the ones that we couldn't identify right now, just by giving examples. Because this is what's not helping us fulfill ourselves, our relationships. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll play some music. And then we'll talk about the play work exercises that comes next. So feel, get comfortable. We're going to do a guided meditation. So close your eyes. Start breathing in and out through your nose. Take a deep breath in your nose. And exhale twice through your mouth. One more time. Breathe in through your nose. Hold up top. And release with your mouth. Good job. And one last time. Ah, your tongue out, exhaling everything that no longer serves us, that has allowed us to be healthy. And to begin, I'd like for us to chant OM three times. So take a deep breath. Oh, oh. One more time. 
take a deep breath. Oh. And one last one, make it the deepest breath to chant on. Start breathing naturally. Mm. Relax your hands and your knees. Mm. Keep your gaze on your third eye that point between your eyebrows. And I want you to start walking outdoors. There's grass, there are trees. It feels like fall. There are orange tones around. The sun's still out. Starting to fall at around 45 degrees angle, creating this beautiful light. You are running. You are happy. You start spinning around. You feel spacious. You extend your arms. You look up to the sky and bring in all the blessings and are so thankful for this beautiful day and earth and planet that we live on. Ah, and we take a deep breath. And we continue walking, sensing all the energy, all the magnetic energy of the love, of oneness, of oneness with nature. And then you decide to sit down in a place where it's still out in the open. You have a little bit of shade from the sun. Mm. And from that place, you drop into your heart. You put your hands on your chest, the right hand over the left one. You take a deep breath. And you connect with your inner child. You ask him or her to present itself. You call him or her by her name, whatever the name was. When you were a little girl, maybe you had a special nickname. They called you different. And you call it sweet and gentle like you would to a little child.
Can you introduce yourself? You say hello. My name is. I am the older version of you. How are you? And just notice and feel how that little boy or the little girl may be reacting. She may be shy. She may be scared. She may not want to show her face. Or maybe she is ready to meet you. Connect with that child energetically and feel whatever he or she is feeling. And let it know that now you come back to build a relationship, to create trust, to create a bond, to get to know one another. Let her, him know that you're here to stay. You're going to be showing up. You understand. If your her is not ready to start communicating just yet. that it takes time to build trust. And you also let him or her know that you're sorry for not having shown up before. But you are here now. And you are here now to let her know, let him know that it's okay now, that there's no need to be scared. There's no need to feel fear. That him or her now has an older version who can provide safety, that can protect him or her. You're also going to let him or her know that as you move forward, especially when making big decisions, we're going to consult with this little boy or girl. How would this make him and her feel? Is she ready? Is he ready to go wherever it is you're wanting to take your little child? So tap in to your little kid. Is it sad? Is it happy? Is it being shy? Is it perhaps mad? Ask if it's okay if you can give him or her a hug. And if she or her is not ready, then that's okay. But you will wait till your inner child is ready. 
that you'll stand by its side till it knows that you will not abandon your little child again. And we're gonna ask our inner child to help us when she or him is ready. Let him or her know of all your accomplishments Maybe you have a job that you like. Maybe you just wrote a book. Maybe you just met a great person. Let him or her know of your whereabouts, of all your accomplishments. Maybe you have children now. Children of your own that are now, hey, look. I can do this. And slowly, energetically need it. She's not ready. He's not ready to receive a hug. Send it so much love, send it so much light. And let her know you're gonna be checking in, coming back. And that you're open to receive and that whenever she or him is ready to communicate, that you're there to listen, that you have your ear open, that you're slowing down and taking time to listen. And that you're open and that you're okay and that you understand if her or she is mad. That's okay. That she has every right to be so. It's okay. Let him or her know that you'd like to write him or her a letter. And that you would like it very much if him or her would respond when their little child is ready to be so. That you're eager to meet them. That you're so happy to just be here and to make this re-encounter. And that you're willing and open to listen and to feel with no judgment. With just love, with radiant love, now take a deep breath,
And I'd like for you to notice whatever feeling you've gotten from your little kid, especially anything that may have been fear, stress, confusion, being shy. And see if you can remember why. Your inner child feels this way. And just tap in with that feeling. And I want you to just let it go. And we're going to be adding a different feeling, a different energy. We're going to visualize the colors of the rainbow just by visualizing those beautiful colors of the rainbow. Notice how your body starts changing every color with very high frequency. And we get that frequency healing energy. A four for one hertz. Two, those feelings, they may feel a little heavy to give our little girl or little boy the support and the energy that it needs as it's getting reacquainted with us. As it's getting to know the knows that we're gonna come and we're gonna stay and that we're not gonna abandon them again. Give it that strength. We send beautiful light. We send the, the beautiful colors. We're here to protect. We're here to keep warm. And we consult when making big decisions with our little kid. Setting boundaries of anything that may be harmful for our inner child. Anything that we know as we tap in and we connect that generally him and her does not want in her field. And slowly start bringing your hearts down from your chest, putting them on your knees. And start shaking your head, move your back, relax your shoulders. Do some somatic movement, allowing the intelligence of your body to move you as it knows best what needs to be stretched. 
and slowly start opening your eyes. And for this first session, it's the greeting first before we start asking our inner child to start telling us everything. We gotta gain its trust. We gotta let it know that we're here to stay, that we're not gonna abandon it again. So we have the play work exercises. You're going to be identifying what are your wounds. I'm gonna send you the list. What are some of your limiting beliefs? How is it that you self-sabotage yourself? Any patterns that you have? And what's fun, I love doing the My Wheel of Life assessment to see how balanced you are in all areas of your life. And very key to journal any feelings, what you saw when you were with your little girl, your little boy, what age was he or her? Was it sad? What did you feel? Was it happy? Was it smiling? Was it shy? Was it curious? Was it in rage? Whatever it may be, write it down. And I love for you to do a letter to your child, just an introduction, email, or not email, but letter, letting it know that, hey, here I am. This is what I've accomplished now. This is what we've done together. Letting it know that you're there to protect her and to serve her. And if you haven't already, taking the inner child quiz. It's on the link on my website. I highly recommend it. Just see if maybe your inner child needs to play, needs to be nurtured, needs to feel safe, um, needs to take a time out, whatever time out, like uh, take a time to relax, whatever it may be. Every week as we move forward, there's going to be more exercises. So this part, it's going to be the longest. We're going to be doing different exercises. So right now it's just introductory. So we will continue working on the root chakra to make it feel it's secure, making sure that we're relating to health and then moving on. But what's key today for the first week is to really identify where are you at? So this is a program that it's running for a total of seven weeks with this being the first week. And I'm running a Christmas special. So if you feel called to do so, I'm still gonna send you all the information that I said to start identifying with your inner child and send you, send you the slides as well for you to have. Because um, from now on, now that you've connected with your inner child, you can move forward, you can start talking to it. And, and it's important that you check in and we're going to start creating daily rituals. We're going to start asking you to bring in your baby doll, bring in pictures when you were a little girl. Uh, we're going to be writing different letters to our child. We're going to connect, we're going to be connecting with our future selves as well. We're going to be calling in, you know, our, our mom. We're going to be connecting with our little child and then our mom from that time and our dad from that time. We're going to be connecting with the little kids and our siblings. So we're going to be basically going through all the chakras, balancing all our lives, and even going to the aspects of money. What was it that your inner child was listening to when they were little, like, you know, maybe there are a lot of associations with money where they saw that, or maybe people would come to the table and complain about money of how hard it was to obtain money or there were struggles in the family, whatever it may be. We're going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at health and eating habits. 
Um, they're going to be going through all of that. So there's a journal that's going to be building up and I'm going to be giving exercises each week. So before this program, I had the 21 day self-love program and the inner child was part of the self-love program, but the self-love program gives you so many different tools, like every single day, but this is a program that you can do on your own. So the first week I talk about each, every single day, I talk about each um, layer of the universe, each universal law. And each day we're doing different challenges of how we can love ourselves more as well. So if you get the package right now, it's amazing because you'll also get the free class of the 21 day self-love program. So if you're real, you're called to do so, uh, we have that available. Otherwise, um, I'm going to be running the same special um, till Christmas for $283. So it's $50 off on the regular price of $333. So we'll be getting the live courses. And then if you want to bring a friend, which is even better, you not only get also the 21 day self program for you and your friend, but also um, you're going to be getting a bigger deal, which is $55 off for each one of you. So some of the best gifts that you can give your family is self nourishment, self love to really get to know themselves if they're ready and they're willing. So I'm going to open up for questions right now. So feel free to unmute yourself, whatever questions you may have about the exercises that we did or any questions. Let me know. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Oh, you can go to my website and see different testimonials as well. More than happy to do so. So let's see. Anyone have any questions? Let me know. I saw someone wrote financial freedom, helping animals and babies. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So anyone, any questions? Are we good? Okay. Well, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have. I'm here for you. Keep in touch. I'm going to be sending you the email uh, so you can have the slides and start working and start identifying even deeper and continue your inner child journey. This is deep because once you make the introduction, then that opens all the doors and it's up to you to keep up. Um, and what's beautiful about working together and committing as a group is that so you're doing it and every day we're working towards connecting with our inner child and we're using different tools as well and we're in community so I'm here for you I love you all let me know how I can help and support you take care bye Wait, okay.